Hi everyone, this is Eugene Lee Show, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about calibrating a camera with ElcoVision 10. Uh, for those of you that don't know, ElcoVision is a well-known photogrammetry package that's uh, used significantly in uh, Europe, and um, calibration is an important part of the photogrammetric process in order to get the most accurate results. So um, I want to walk you through this process a little bit. Hopefully uh, this will be informative for you. Now, before you begin, the first thing that you're going to need to do is acquire photos and set up a calibration wall. So I'll talk a little bit about that. This here is a, uh, a wall that I've used to set up all my targets on. And uh, a couple of things about setting up a, a, a target wall that you're going to be photographing with your camera. And that is the bigger that it is, it's typically better. So you're going to get uh, better accuracy from larger walls. Now, uh, this is just a, an example, so you know, I'm limited by the space I have stored up here in my office, and this is a, uh, a 1.5 by 2 meter area that I have for the targets. Now, if you can get bigger, like 10 to 15 meters, that's obviously better, but keep in mind the target size is going to have to be increased accordingly so that you can see it better in the photographs. In this particular photo, I have uh, targets that are about uh, 6 to 7 centimeters, something like that. Here's another example of a calibration wall that's been done and you'll notice that there's some targets on this door and there's also targets on the or by the window and what's important here is that you add a little bit of depth to the targets and that they're they are not all on just a flat plane so we have a, a little bit of a recessed area here and of course these targets here are a little bit further forward so this actually helps the calibration now, another thing is that when you're taking your photographs, you need to take your photos from many different angles. So I'm going to bring up a contact sheet here that I've made showing a number of different photos. And here you can see this is the uh, sort of where the ceiling is on this photo. And you can see that I'm taking shots from many different angles. And also, it's important to rotate the camera, you know, plus 90 degrees minus 90 degrees and sometimes even take shots upside down so you want to get as much variation in the camera angles as possible so the wider the angles the better the calibration is and you're going to want to take at least 12 shots but if you can take 24 or 30 shots with a lot of variety uh, that would significantly help as well so the next thing you're going to want to do once you have your wall set up your calibration wall you're going to need to measure these targets somehow so in many other photogrammetry packages, you'll find that they'll give you some target sheets and things like that. But it's typically a relative calibration. So it's not done using real life uh, or real world known coordinates. So in this case, what I've done is I've taken a total station and I've measured the position of each of these targets. And here you'll see that I have X, Y, and Z coordinates. And on the left side here, this column here is all the target numbers. And the 1, 2, 3 is a code and that tells it that it's going to be a control point when it's doing the calibration. Uh, there are other codes available, but typically you're, you're going to want to use the 1, 2, 3 for all uh, permanently fixed targets. Now, in this photo here, you'll notice that there are some targets on the door. You can, in fact, use these targets, but because they're on a door, and a door you know, could move a little bit, maybe a few millimeters here and there, you might want to avoid using these as control points. And what you can do is you can still add them to the control point file so instead of a code 123 you would give it a code of 0 and that just tells it that it's not a fixed control point okay so at this point you've got the wall set up you've got all the targets placed on the wall you've got a total station survey or some other type of survey with all the uh, control points uh, in 3D and you've created a control point file so now what we're going to do is just bring this all together into ElcoVision okay so now that you have all your information in ElcoVision the process is quite easy and all we really need to do here is go file start a new project file and I'm going to maximize this and we're going to need to bring in the photographs so I have a uh, I have a file here with all my photographs so I'm just going to highlight all the all the photographs that I want making sure that I have them all right and I'm just going to drag and drop them into this space here so you'll see that it's loading up all the images here so what I'm going to want to do at this point is simply start the calibration, which is this, uh, this icon right here, full automatic camera calibration. So I click that and another window comes up. And what this does is, what this does is it's showing me all the images that it's going to use for the calibration. I want them all selected. And also it says that it's going to create a uh, camera calibration template from uh, these images. Uh, so I'm going to hit create a, a new camera and assign. 
So th these were done with my iPhone. So it defaults here. It says iPhone 3GS, and it's given it a new code of 123. Now from here, um, you're also going to have to load up the uh, control point file. And in Elcovision, it's really just a, a text file. You just need to save it with a COO extension. So uh, normally this wouldn't show up here. This would be blank. But all you need to do is hit the button on the right here. Uh, click that open. A window will open. And uh, select your file. Hit open. And it saves it. And basically from there, just hit start. And uh, it will go ahead and process all the images. And as it goes through here, it will start to identify the number of targets. And um, I'll just let this process a little bit and uh, sort of fast forward uh, with the video uh, until it's done. Okay, so now we're complete here and we have our uh, calibration done. Here's our file. Uh, it looks like all the camera positions have been reported correctly. They're all on this side here. You can see all the targets that it's uh, identified on the wall. And it gives you some of the information here about the, the camera data. You can see here that the uh, uh, these bars uh, represent the quality of the camera calibration. You can see here that it's actually quite good. The accuracy here is 0.604 pixels, and I've oriented 22 of 23 images. So I probably have uh, one image there that probably wasn't taken all that well. Maybe it was blurry or something like that. However, the quality here is quite good. So I'm just going to hit Finish. Uh, now, just notice here it says save camera data into separate camera file. So if you wanted to save this out separately, just have this ticked and hit finish. And you can save this uh, in a, any directory you would like. I'm just going to save it as a .cam file in the same folder that I was, had all the images. So I'm going to hit save. And uh, there you go. You have uh, your camera file saved. So another little interesting thing about Elcovision is once you've done the camera calibration, you can select the object points here, and you can see all the calculated points. Um, now, if you hold Shift and middle mouse button and scroll, you can adjust the size of these, but you can also display some interesting information. And the first one is the residuals. So, you can see here I've got some residuals, and you see the ellipsoid, and which particular points are bigger relative to the other. But as an example, I can see that this point, let's say down here at the bottom, is rather large. So I can click on this, and that looks to be point like point 10. So what I'm going to do is, in my column here, I'm going to look for point 10, and I can go across and see what my error is like. Um, I currently have this in meters, so if I right-click, I can select millimeters, and I can see that one of my largest errors here is like 0.77 millimeters uh, deviation which is not bad considering uh, that particular distance and most of the other ones you can see are um, uh, much less than a millimeter. So this is uh, uh, an interesting way to look at your project and your calibration and see uh, what uh, points are good and bad and um, you can see all the errors here in the object points table and uh, yeah so it gives you an indication of real world values of, of error. So one last comment about the camera data and that is that um, because we've written that camera file locally to a folder, it's not included in the default startup file. So if we do want to add it to that, it's also quite simple. Just go to this Edit Camera Data button up here, and it'll bring up a list of all the cameras. What we want to do is select the camera that we want down here, and where it says Camera File, we just want to hit Save. And what it'll do is it'll actually write that uh, into the uh, default file. And I'll just hit OK, and we can check that as well. So what I have here is the uh, Elcovision CAM file. And what you'll notice here in the last line, and I realize some of this is cut off, but um, it says iPhone 3GS. So it has, in fact, put in the data uh, from the camera file and written it to the default uh, file for Elcovision. So um, that's pretty much all that's involved with calibrating a camera with Elcovision. It's a pretty simple process uh, once you get the setup done. And of course, uh, I did it with my iPhone, but you can use just about any particular camera. And with that, we'll end the video. Thanks.